Hello class. This is Professor Jane Williams and I want to talk to you a little bit about our upcoming midterms. But first, let's talk a little bit about Chapter 8. You're probably finished with Chapter 8 by now and I hope you found it as fascinating as I did. Social class in the United States. Actually, Many people in the United States would tell you we don't have a social class. Do you believe that? But nobody under the age of 50 would say that because it seems so very obvious to them that there are social classes, groups of people who have other privileges, are able to do more things, have greater income, access, power to things, and other groups who don't. Now, I know you're going to immediately say to me, well, that's the beauty of the United States. Our social classes are movable. You can be in one social class and then move up to the other one. And indeed, we can. And that is the beauty of the United States. However, unless you've missed it, the ability to move from one social class to the other, let's say lower social class, and I'm thinking income here, to middle class, has become much, much, much harder than it used to be. It's not just your imagination or the imagination of your parents or your grandparents. It really is the case. It used to be that if somebody's parents were in one social class, let's say that they were in lower middle class, you could predict almost immediately just by knowing that that probably their children would be in the upper middle class. They would move up because everybody tries to um, set things so that their children can do even better than what they did. However, now we have begun to arrange things in such a way that makes that very difficult, almost impossible. If you look at the numbers now, and I think you learned this when you went through the chapter, you will find out that today the greatest predictor of what social class your children will be in is your own. If you're in the lower middle class, your children will probably be in lower middle class too. If they don't, if they're not in that class, it is more likely that they will be in a class lower than yours, not higher. That's a little sad, isn't it? You're thinking to me, what has changed in the United States? Well, we have allowed people who have achieved many financial things to turn around then and then make rules that make it harder for the people coming behind them to achieve the same thing, even when that does not necessarily benefit them. Isn't that weird? I think we as, a, as citizens need to check on that and be more careful about laws that we allow to be made and more careful about whether or not those kinds of things are hidden in regulations that we allow. That's chapter 8. Let's talk a little bit about the midterm. When it comes to the midterm, which is immediately after the spring break, by the way, we've got quite a bit we need to cover. Well, not really. Okay, just a little bit. First of all, the timing <laughs> is done right away, and as you know, there's no extension of the time. And some people may find this convenient because you have the whole of the spring break to get it together. Other people might find it inconvenient because you might be going away or whatever, but it doesn't matter. It, it's the same for everybody. Okay. Also, during the midterm, I want you to take this time to make your presentation, much like I'm doing here now, but do it well. Think of all the presentations you've ever seen teachers um, make and pull out of them what you thought was best about it and then make yours because at this time in your life you are probably an expert on good teachers and good presenters so pick out the good discard the bad you have five minutes roughly to be the best teacher you've ever seen in your life try to be that for your classmates okay also get all your parts in and make this simple all the things that I asked you to do for the midterm put them all in one long Microsoft Word document say copy go over to web access and say paste that's the easy way <laughs> you can read all the descriptions that I put in there but let me tell you that way is easy if you're going to add to it and then you're done okay good luck on that make it easy for your classmates to be able to get the main points you're trying to get across 
Make it easy for them to understand your 10 points, which should directly reflect the information that you have given us, and make sure they are facts, not opinions. Make sure they are important facts that we really need to know in order to understand your subject. Don't give us little lightweight stuff that is so obvious that we could find it ourselves in, um, I don't know, Google in like 10 seconds, right? <laughs> okay, so looking forward to that. Other than that, enjoy yourself. I find this a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to seeing each and every one of them. And um, enjoy your spring break as well. I will talk to you when we get back.